All right, thank you for tuning into this video. Today, we're gonna look at this Daredevil Artist Edition. Look how large this book is, almost. Look at this, look how large this book is. So, um, a little bit about me. My name is Walden Wong, a comic book artist from Marvel and DC. Uh, you can check out more on my website, uh, WaldenWongArt.com. On my website, there shows all my social media and all the comic book work that I've worked on, so you can check that out. And if you enjoyed these videos, please think about uh, supporting me over on my Patreon. My Patreon is patreon.com slash WaldenWongArt, and there are just different tiers that you can look at. So today, we're gonna do doing a review, actually an unboxing review of this artist edition. So look how large this book is. When I open it, it's almost like, look, look at this. Okay, so here we go. All right, so this is the box that it came in. Uh, Daredevil, Let's see, so you need to see the UPC code. Here it is, take a, take a look at it. Uh, I'll also add links below my video description. So if you want to order one of these, uh, you can also uh, order it. Uh, here's the, just a regular shipping box. And then when you open it, let me open this up. And then there is the Daredevil Man Without Fear. Now I should point out that this isn't the artifact edition. Okay, this is the artist edition. Artifact edition came out seven years ago and it's the same cover. And I don't actually have that myself, but we're gonna take a look at uh, this one. And then if you have the artifact edition, uh, please comment down below, let me know if there's any difference. So I'm gonna open this up. It's my first time looking at it. I'm just gonna just open this up like right over here. Open up the plastic seal. I'm using a quill to open this up. That's what inkers do. Okay, now I'm gonna remove the plastic wrap. And again, this is the Frank Miller Daredevil Man Without Fear. Okay, and I'll, I'll show you the uh, everything about this book, okay? So here is the front. Dare, Frank Miller Daredevil The Man Without Fear. Electra once he loved her, now she is his most deadly em enemy. Uh, IDW Marvel, again. Artist edition. Pay attention to this one, okay? So, uh, if some of you are looking to purchase one, um, there's two versions. There's an artisan edition, and this one's the artist edition. This one just came out like uh, like last week, uh, as of this video. Okay, here's a spine, Frank Miller's Daredevil artist artist edition, and here's the back, Frank Miller signature FM. Okay, and then now we're gonna take a look at the inside. Okay, make sure I have everything that fits in here. Zoom in a little bit. Okay, so here's the inside front cover. Let me take a look at the inside back cover. Okay, see if it opens nicely. Okay, it opens nicely. So here, we're gonna start uh, one page at a time. Frank Miller's Daredevil, artist edition. Okay, she's Electra and she, and she is no man's fool. Okay, I'm gonna turn the page. And then here is the information. Okay, I'm gonna bring it closer. Feel free to pause the video to look at it more. Okay, here's this one. Special special thanks uh, part right over here. Okay, feel free to pause the video, take a closer look. And then here's the uh, uh, information that uh, IDW has. And then here's this. And there you go. Okay, this was published in 2023. First printing, okay? First printing uh, artist edition. I'm really wondering if the artist edition is the same as the uh, artist edition. So, apparently IDW, they, when they make these books, um, it's known that the artisan edition has like a lot of different pages whereas the artist actually the artisan edition has uh, different pages of the artworks of that artist's artwork whereas the artist art the artist edition has like the whole book. So here, there's again, here's, okay, so taking a look at this, and we bring it closer to the camera, we'll notice that it's just a page here and a page there. So it's not complete, right over here. This one's also not complete. It only has like uh, this issue, a couple of pages. This issue has um, more, more pages, but not like page one is missing, page four, five, six is missing. So um, those of you who have the Artisan Edition, uh, let me know, uh, comment down below and let me know if that's exactly the same or different. Okay, we wanna take a look at this. So I didn't actually get the um, Artisan Edition myself. So this is my first time seeing a, a Daredevil book. You're here, here, okay, and here's some of the artwork from it. Okay.
okay. So this is Daredevil. So I myself, I've seen Frank Miller uh, at conventions one time, um, way before I started working in comics. I remember it was in uh, San Francisco WonderCon. WonderCon, uh, Frank Miller was guest, and then I was also going to the convention, but I wasn't actually working in comics at the time. Uh, I was just a guy who was uh, collecting uh, comic books and then was thinking about becoming a comic book artist. And then uh, when I was going to the convention, I, I saw this guy, he was dressed in black, uh, like a black suit with a t-shirt and black pants. And he was just outside of the convention on the streets, uh, taking a smoke. And I recognized him and it was, it was Frank Miller. He was younger then, um, like not as, um, you know, like he was such, I think this was like probably, Let's see, how long have, been, have I been working in comics myself? Uh, I've been working in comics since 1996, so it was before then. I would say 1995, around then, that's when I first uh, saw him. He was just standing up there uh, smoking a cigarette. I didn't really talk to him or approach him. I was thinking about talking to him, but, you know, like... It's kind of weird talking to walk, walking to someone you don't really know them. So here's Electra. And this is uh, Daredevil's artwork. You can see that some of these were done on microns. The color here, they're kind of faded a little bit. Whereas some of these are Indie ink, these are done on microns. It looks like back in the day, uh, maybe when comic books were done in the golden ages, uh, everything was done with the uh, quill, like the crow quill, like, 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 like this tool right over here, and with Indie ink. And then later on when um, microns were uh, created, such as, Micron such as uh, these guys, um, artists started to use Micron because it was so much convenient. Um, people would just um, use that and just start drawing with it and you know, like it's, you didn't have to really dip the bottle of ink. It was just so much easier. Okay, so I'm looking at some of the artwork here. Okay, I like, I like, I like the line weights here. There it all. And then just some white, uh, white out and just some zip tones here. Zip tones as these uh, tones that they did. So back in the day, they didn't really have a uh, Photoshop uh, that would do comic books where they can quickly drop th those tones in. Uh, they had these uh, tone paper that uh, artists can buy and they would just cut out, cut out and just place on top of it. Frank Miller signature. Okay, Daredevil, Daredevil number 175. There's Daredevil. So I've actually never actually bought any of these Daredevil comics before. Um, no, I just never had. Uh, my first uh, knowledge of Frank Miller was when he worked on uh, Dark Knight, the, the Dark Knight, Batman the Dark Knight, and that's my first introduction to him. Anything before that, that, that was before my time, uh, before I started collecting comic books, but I know he has like a really good run on Daredevil. I think he worked on Daredevil first before he started working on uh, Batman, uh, Dark Knight. And I know he has like a, a like Electra, so I think this is like an important uh, issue uh, that Frank Miller worked on. Okay, so I think he was writing and drawing and inking himself. So a lot of nice free space, nice flowing with the artwork. Some tones again over here. And as I'm looking at this, I, I do notice that uh, Frank Miller here and there, you can use whiteout. I remember when I first started working in comic books, um, Paul Smith was one of the uh, artists that was uh, mentoring me. He was giving me tips on what to do. And when I, was, when I first started uh, working, I, I didn't want to make any mistakes when I was uh, working in comic books. It uh, looks like just some white ink that would uh, be painted on top of that. I think that's done with uh, Pro White. And um, Paul said to me, you know, Walden, you can actually use whiteout um, because once you're done with the artwork and if there's any white out there and it's scanned, no one's going to know that you actually use whiteout. So from then on, I, I thought, okay, whiteout's not just to do correction mistakes because, you know, people have whiteout. They just use that to, like, uh, fix mistakes. But then, like, here's some whiteout over here. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm going to bring this closer to the camera. See, there's a little bit of whiteout. It's just a little bit more whiter. Um, over time, the original art, uh, they kind of fade to yellow, and the whiteout uh, would just continue staying white. Here's some of the... Uh, Clouds. I like that um, texture that's done over there. That's really clean, really nice. Okay. With lots, so I'm looking at this. It's not where I started working in comics uh, during the time where 19, I think it was like 1996, where the Image Comics was a boom, when, when all of that uh, started happening. Uh, I'm looking at a lot, a lot of the artwork that Frank Miller did on this. Uh, there's not that many hatch lines or cross hatch lines. There's a few, but not so much like how Jim Lee would add to it or how Rob Liefeld would add to it. Uh, this is more so about forms and the figures. 
I, a little of the free flowing of the characters, like it just flows from one panel to another. How it just goes from here, this lake points, this goes to this direction, and this one just goes. It, it there, there's some white ink. It reminds me of uh, Sin City. Some of the Sin City work that uh, that Frank Miller did. So you see the white out. He's using white out just to white out some of the lines to help separate the glasses from from the background. Okay, we're gonna take a look at this. See, all that is white out. So underneath that, there was something there. This is also, I think this was used, this wasn't white out, this is white paint. Um, we also have, um, working in comics, we also use a FW white paint, which is like a, a jar of paint that you add water to it, and then uh, you can add as much water or how little water to make it opaque or um, as thick or as light. Klaus Janssen, okay, Klaus Janssen signatures here. So this tells me that Frank Miller was penciling this and Klaus Janssen was inking it. So they were a team working on this Daredevil. Later on when they worked on Batman Dark Knight, they were also the same team. Okay, Klaus Janssen, uh, October of 84, he signed this. Look, this reminds me of Ronin. Frank Miller also worked on a, a graphic novel called Ronin for uh, DC Comics. Okay, a lot of whiteouts, a little, little bit of whiteouts. Okay, here's Bullseye. Bullseye right here, some tones over here. Uh, working in comics today, I'm glad I don't really need to work deal with uh, these zipper tones. Uh, if I do need tones, I usually I will scan the artwork, and then after scanning it, I would um, drop it in on Photoshop. Okay, I like the vanishing points over here. That's really nicely done. Okay, this is a lot of work with thinking. What I would do is I would just, I would ink these bars in and then just draw these lines and then wipe that, wipe that out just to keep the lines a little bit more consistent. That's how I would approach doing it. Here's some uh, white paint. Okay, here's some more of the artwork. Look how nice, look how nice these structure is. Uh, there's like nice uh, negative space that uh, shows some of the, uh, the, the car over here. Okay, here's Electra. That face over here is beautiful. Of course, uh, there was a lot of working and reworking on this, so that uh, took a little bit of time. And then here's another page with Bullseye. That's a nice looking page, right over here. Okay, we're gonna continue looking at the rest of the book. And then we have, oh yeah, this panel. I think this was used for a graphic novel cover or something. This panel is a nice famous panel. Bullseye, look at the face, look at the detail on that face over here. I'm gonna bring it closer to the camera. Just just look at how nice the face and the angle and the structure is. The whiteout just adds to it, the tone and everything. Okay, we're gonna take a continue looking at the rest of this. So Frank Miller worked on uh, Ronin and then um, Today in the market, they, he also worked on Ronin 2, uh, but then Philip Tan uh, penciled it and Daniel Henriquez, uh, I think that's how you pronounce his last name, he, he inked it. Uh, it's a six issue miniseries that's uh, coming out, I'm not sure. It's taking a little bit of time for them to work on the book. I thought it was like uh, monthly and it wasn't monthly, it was like bi-monthly, it's quarterly. I don't know if it's quarterly or, or bi-annually or whatever. So far, it's been a while. It's almost been, see, one, two, three, four, five months, and there's only, I think, four, five, six, seven months, and there's only like uh, maybe three issues out or something. Okay. Uh, under his uh, Frank Miller um, imprint, FMP or something, uh, Frank Miller Productions or something. The good guys wear red, and this is the Punisher. Punisher looks kind of skinny over there. Uh, there was a little bit more bulkier than the Punisher. Okay, Stanley's presents Guts, Miller, Script Storytelling, Jansen, okay, Pen Penciler, oh, oh, Jansen was penciling and inking, that's interesting, so Frank Miller was, Frank Miller was a scripter, but for, based on what this says over here, uh, Frank Miller is a scripter and storyteller, uh, Claus Jansen was the penciler, inker, and colorist. Rosen was the letter and O'Neill was the uh, editor and Jim Suter was the supervisor. Okay, so let's take a look at this. This is issue 185. Okay, it looks like, okay, it looks like Frank Miller's work. 
it really looks like so i'm thinking maybe frank miller was doing layouts uh just to get the work uh, done quicker and then claus jankison uh, worked over his layout and did finishes so maybe back then they just called it a uh, scripter storyteller scripter and then uh, the pencil is just pencil instead of a finisher okay and then we have this one okay and then we go to the next page. Uh, some of the font, the lettering font. Who who did the lettering? Uh, Rosen, I think it was. Let me just take another look. The uh, letters Rosen. Okay, some of the letters in this in this uh, comic book business, they've been lettering for such a long time. They're still lettering. They've been lettering for decades. Uh, Stanley presents. Okay, Frank Miller, writer, storyteller, Klaus Jackson, pencil and inker colors again. Uh, Joe Rosen, letter, Denny O'Neill, editor, and Jim Shooter was a supervisor. Supervisor, or they call that uh, editor in chief in today's world. So, editor and editor in chief. Okay, here's this. A lot of uh, tone shoes. Look, here's Black Widow. Here's some basking and cross hatching. Just here's some more uh, fading. Uh, if you look at some of the artwork that's done back then compared to some of the inking artwork that's done today, um, it, there's the style changes. But then this style here, this art here is just so nice. This, this is so Frank Miller-esque style here. Uh, this is like a, like a cross hatch with a brush. There's some brushwork over here, uh, some white uh, white ink. Okay, my favorite panels to ink are panels like this where there's nothing there. <laughs> and then we're gonna go to the next page. Okay, same thing. Frank Miller, writer, Jansen. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so when I first started working comics, I know that we used to put down the book title here, book title, issue number. And then in today's world, uh, when I, well, I shouldn't say today's world, but um, in today's original art, they have a little slot here that says the, uh, it's artwork for the uh, penciler and inker. Okay, but when, when I started also like with these artwork, uh, we used to just write the, our names on the back of the artwork. Uh, some artists didn't even write their names on the back of the artwork. So when it comes time to art returns, the art returns person didn't know who to send it to. I remember I used to get artwork. Oh, look how nice that looks. This whole page. I'm going to bring this closer to the camera. This, this just, this just looks so amazing. Right over here, that that one image. Like I, I can also, I can kind of see uh, uh, Electra's hair. Did over black and white. Yeah, so I remember when I started working uh, in the beginning and we didn't write our names on the original artwork, the art returns department would try to figure out who did the artwork. They would talk to the editors. And if the editors doesn't remember, they would try to get the, the name of the title and the issue number to, f to find out who worked on it. And then uh, they would return the original artwork artwork that way and there were times when um, I would get artwork that didn't belong to me or another artist would get artwork that I worked on and then it was sent to them and then we would contact each other and then um, we would send the artwork back but later on I think Marvel and DC they decided to just write down a little slot that says penciler and inker over there and then it's easier for art returns uh, people to uh, return their artwork but like uh, fast forward to when comic book artists like um like myself that does artwork uh, at home we don't even send the artwork back anymore once we'll do the artwork um we, we'll work it at our, our home studio or just at home in, in another room or something uh, one of my youtube viewers uh, asked like does comic book artists actually wake up in the morning and go to the office we don't really actually go to our office uh, most comic book artists they are freelance artists they work at home or they'll rent a studio and they'll work in a studio and they'll do the work there and then once it's done they'll scan the artwork and the artwork doesn't leave their studio okay some of the artwork these days are oh well, look at this this is the the spread let's take a look at this spread right over here let me hold this here very nice Daredevil, a portfolio of Frank Miller calls Jansen. Uh, they're a great team. Okay, let's look at this side. Here is this. Yeah, so we would work on the artwork. Like if I was working with a different penciler, like um, some of you who don't know who I am, I'm again, my name is Walden Wall. I'm a comic book artist from Marvel and DC. I'll, I'll do a lot of uh, inking uh, work for over other pencilers. Uh, if I would do inking work, uh, pencilers these days, they would send Spider-Man, Electra, and Wolverine. Okay, and here's how we bring this closer so you guys can see the detail. Pause the video if you want to see more of what that is. And then here's the artwork. 
And then I'll get the artwork, uh, which, is, which are scans of the pencils. And then after I get the scans, I'll convert into blue line and I'll ink on top of the blue lines. When I ink on top of the blue lines, after I'm done inking, I'll scan it again on Photoshop and I'll use uh, like a tool to remove all the blue. So it'll be like complete inks. And then when I'm done, I will upload that to Marvel or DC and then that, they will get the artwork and then send it to the colors or send it to the letterer. And then they would uh, do the artwork then. But the artwork that I've worked on, uh, especially if I'm doing blue lines, it doesn't leave my studio. Like uh, if I worked on 20 pages of one comic book uh, and I inked it all over blue lines, uh, I still have all the uh, original art unless I sell it or something. Um, some artists, uh, pencilers, they want, what is this? Double tone number four shading blue. I don't know what that is. Uh, looks like some kind of color tones over here. This was, looks like, uh, is that a tone here? Or is this gray wash? Uh, it's gray wash that just faded over time. Okay, I'm gonna explain some 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 of these tones. Um, oh look, oh yeah, this is the Wolverine double spread. Wolverine, yeah, Frank Miller's work on Wolverine and Joe Rubenstein's signature. Look at Joe Rubenstein's signature. Joe, can you believe it? Joe Rubenstein worked on Wolverine. I grew up uh, when I was collecting comic books. The first Wolverine comic book I ever bought was Wolverine issue four, I believe, and it was so hard to get issue one, two, three, because I wasn't around uh, to buy it when it was first in uh, the shelves uh, or on news rack. Look at this. So the, I think some of these original art for these guys are worth Chris Claremont signatures over here. Yeah, I think some of these original artwork is worth like a lot, a lot of money. Okay, covers. These are the covers. I'm gonna bring this closer so you can see what kind of covers they are over here. Okay. Okay, so this is a, I'm, just gonna, I'm not gonna read off here, I'm gonna read off right here. Right here. Captain America issue 241 cover uh, with uh, Punisher, Punisher. Uh, okay. And then we have Daredevil with all the tray dressing over here. All these are done with glue stick, that's why colors are fading. Anything that's uh, taped on, uh, over time it just fades. Uh, here's white out, notice the white out just stays white uh, on um, Black Widow's uh, tummy. He has Black Widow. And then we have Bullseye right over here. Bullseye Daredevil, I don't know who that is. Uh, this is for Daredevil issue 161. Interesting, uh, all the glue stick cut and paste, you can see that even the numbers here, it's like different numbers, like 161, they're done uh, separately. So I, I also used to letter uh, back in the day. And then uh, to do that, uh, we would print that on Microsoft Word. And then we would print out a sheet of paper with a lot of different ones in different sizes. We would use an X-Acto knife and we would just cut around them one and then just kind of like glue stick and then piece it on. So these are done with glue stick. So some of you original art collectors uh, who have some of these artwork, I know that some of your uh, art pieces which are glued on these uh, paste ups the some of them are a little bit loose and I know it's a little bit loose so as a collector I, I don't know if you want to rip that off or you want to keep it on because if sometimes if you rip that off there's artwork underneath that if you don't rip it off that glue stick is going to turn the artwork on the bottom even more yellowish kind of like this okay so this is the cover for the uh, this this uh, artist edition over here okay to cover Here's this, let's take a look at that. Okay, here's some of the whiteout. Again, whiteout is okay to use for uh, inking artwork because after inking, you don't really notice notice it. Uh, if you look at the, uh, the actual cover, uh, it looks a little bit different. Okay, and then we have, what is this? Daredevil, Daredevil issue 171, uh, Frank Miller. Daredevil. So here's the here's a thing that I also noticed too. I have been working in comics a lot of times um, Most of the time when I do when I'm inking comic books, uh, I'll be inking the interiors uh, of a book uh, When it comes to covers, I notice that uh, uh, Pencilers they like to pencil that and they like to ink it themselves You know rarely uh, Will they have like another inker uh, ink to cover unless the penciler doesn't know how to ink uh, or they think that the inker would do a better job uh, the main reason for that um, because uh, is because the original art is worth more. Uh, if an inker would ink the original art, uh, especially back in the day, every third cover that they would ink, the inker would get. Okay, so if they ink three issues of Daredevil, the inker would get one of them and pencil would get two of them. If they inked six issues of Daredevil, they would get three of them 
they would uh, pencilers would get four of them, and the inkers would get one of them. Now, if a penciler was worked with a inker for a long time, and they would jump from book to book, like for example, they worked on five issues of Daredevil, and then one issue of X Men, and then they would get the every Daredevil cover. So. The first two covers they did on Daredevil goes to the penciler, the third cover goes to the inker, and then the next two um, Daredevil uh, goes to the penciler, and then the X-Men one, which is the third piece of cover, goes to the uh, inker. Now I'm saying this because um, some editors don't keep track if, if inkers don't really uh, mention it. Um, so most of the time when you work on a new title, um, editors will just think, oh, it's a new title. Uh, that Let's just count that as the first cover. So pencils get, will get majority of the uh, covers back. Because in the original art market, the covers will sell so much more. So even today, uh, when we work on uh, Blue Lines, um, I I've done comic books where I've worked on the whole interior, but the cover, the penciler would just pencil it themselves and ink it themselves, and then they'll have the original artwork, and then they'll sell that for like thousands and thousands of dollars. So there's a lot of books that I worked on where I've, in the beginning, I've done a lot of covers, but later on, when it's like Blue Lines, I very rarely have I done uh, covers. Uh, I've... Recently, I have done covers where I inked my own work for independent publishers, such as uh, Bleak Haven Comics and uh, some other publishers. Uh, well, that, that's fine because I'm just a kid myself, but uh, most of the new stuff, especially when it was done on Blue Line, rarely, I think in, in the market, I, I only have like maybe a handful of the original art. So if you own a cover that I worked on, it's really rare that you have a, a cover that I, that I uh, inked over another penciler. Here, Art. This is so nice. Okay, this is so nice. I've never seen these Wolverine covers in black and white. I am so happy that they have this in black and white. Okay, this cover right here, uh, Wolverine number four, my first Wolverine right over here. Look at that. So there's cover number two. And over here, and there's cover number four. I wish they had cover number one. It may be in the next page, or, or maybe it won't be, but it's so nice to see these. Okay, uh, it was a four issue miniseries that Frank Miller and Joe Rubenstein worked on. Nope, looks like it's just issue two and issue four. So someone out there owns issue one cover and someone out there owns uh, issue three cover. Okay, uh, here is a Spider-Man piece uh, by Frank Miller. This is uh, something a little bit different, a lot of... Okay, now let's talk about indie inks and microns and stuff. If you look at this artwork, this is as close as a uh, scan as you can get to the original art. You'll notice Spider-Man, there's areas that are really nice in, bla in black. Those areas are done with indie ink. Other areas was done with another ink. Okay, maybe a gray wash or maybe like a thick micron marker or, or a Sharpie. Okay, and those faded over time. And these are kind of like a gray wash. They're not tones. Oh yeah, so I'm going to talk about uh, gray tones. Uh, back then, I was working with, uh, I had a friend, uh, Rick Remender. He was also inking. Uh, right? Rick Remender actually went on to uh, work on some writing for Avengers and Marvels and stuff. Uh, anyway, he was telling me that uh, he bought these orig original Bristol board that had these like, grids on it and then if you use a solution to paint it one direction it will turn gray and then if you use the same solution and you paint it back another direction it will turn like another dark gray so some of those uh so those tones back in the day were, were done that way i don't know if these were done that way so maybe this was also the same tone like they would just apply one direction it would turn this gray and then they'll paint downwards and they will create another gray so you can control how dark and how light by using the solution and i remember the solution uh it, it came in a little glass bottle um rick uh, recommended he showed it to me he came in a bottle and it uh like a, almost like a whiteout you open it and it's like a almost like a syrupy kind of thing and then you just brush it on uh, to paint that on um when um Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was coming out. Kevin Eastman and Peter Lart, they were also using the same kind of board. So if you look at some of their artwork, you'll see the tones, and it doesn't look like it's a cutout tone. It looks like it's painted on. Pinups and more. Okay, Pinups and more over here. Doctor Strange, Classic X-Men, Handbook, Marvel Universe. Okay, and then we have Clug. And then here's, I guess these are pinups by this book. 
Okay, and then we're gonna look at the next page. And we have this Wolverine, which, what is what is this Wolverine for? I don't think I've ever seen these, these this Wolverine. This one's for classic X-Men. Okay, white out, gel pit. Okay, Frank Miller's name right over here. And then we have Bullseye. Joe Rubenstein, Joe Rubenstein is such an awesome uh, artist. Not only is he, an, is he an amazing inker, but he's also an amazing uh, painter, illustrator. He's a really nice guy. I met him for the first time at Heroes Con. I had a booth. All of a sudden, uh, this guy walked up to me. Hey, I'm Joe Rubenstein. I just want to just want to come by and say hi to you. I like your work. So that's the, my first time um, meeting Joe Rubenstein. Uh, very, very nice person. Okay. And then here we have this one, almost done to the last page, Frank Miller biography, okay? So I'm gonna bring this closer, so those of you who want to pause the video and read it more, you can read it, it's right over here. Okay, I'm gonna move it up, feel free to pause the video and continue reading. And here's the inside back cover. That is my review of this uh, artist edition, again, track remember this is the artist edition okay not the artifact edition that came out seven years ago so if you if you own the artifact edition uh, please let me know if there's any difference comment down below and let me know and uh, please like share subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already check out my website is one wall art.com and also check out my patreon page is patreon.com uh, slash one wall art and until next time please like share and subscribe and do all that good stuff take care bye bye